The smell of banana bread whiffs through the air, sounds of Tiger King are blasting from your TV speakers, there's a puzzle laid out on the table and a pantry stock full of toilet paper, and you're getting a quick workout done on the spin bike you just ordered before Zoom meeting number one at 9 a.m. Did that take you back? The beginning of 2020, or the start of the pandemic, was a mix of terrifying, confusing, and a time for new work from home trends to emerge. Whether you took part in them or not, hundreds of thousands of people did, and some consumer trends have come and gone in such a quick period of time that were left feeling like it was a dream, unless you still have a piece of workout equipment sitting in your corner covered in dust. If you were one of the people who panic bought one of the popular spin bikes for $2,245, you're definitely not alone because there were 2.6 million pan customers back in April of 2020. It grew the at-home workout equipment industry to a point where it was larger than entire gym chains in around a month, until a couple of weeks ago where it showed some clear signs of slowing down. Now, a year and a half after the beginning of their rise, the bikes only cost about $1,495 which is almost half price, whereas gym classes are back up to pre-pandemic attendance. So what's the future of these consumer work from home trends? Some we've obviously already left behind, but what about the ones that are here to stay for good? All right, so we're over a year and a half out since the beginning of the work from home panic buy, and guess what? A lot of us are still working from home. Now, if we're talking numbers, at the height of the shift to working from home, 6.8 million Canadians were working out of makeshift offices in their homes, and that number had dropped to 4.3 million by October 2020. Since then, the numbers have actually held pretty steady with just over 4 million Canadians still working from home, something that's probably looking a little bit more permanent now. And those numbers are as of last month, so October 2021, and that's about 24% of the Canadian workforce. That's obviously a really huge change from those pre-pandemic levels when Stats Canada said that only 4% of the Canadian workforce work from home. I mean, if this tells us anything, it's that massive of change is bound to have long lasting impacts on consumer behavior and how we interact with the online world. Now, when it comes to spending and saving, at first, a lot of the predictions were that people wouldn't be spending at all. And if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. People weren't as financially secure, so I guess they should have been saving their money, right? Well, whether we should have been saving our money or not, people were still spending. If we specifically look at high income and younger consumers, they are driving spending. And what's interesting is that they're spending even higher than pre-pandemic levels. Now on the flip side, if we look at low income and older consumers, they're spending less than before. Still, overall spending was happening in that first group and obviously the vast majority of it wasn't happening in person. But I think what's important to really take away here is that we've become reliant on the internet more than ever before. Now, another big category was actually home furnishings. And if you think about it, this is where a lot of people were now spending the vast majority of their time. So it kind of made sense to actually fill it with things that were functional and made sense. What was interesting for us though is that shopping online was always an afterthought. We never really thought too much about it when we were buying anything that we needed. But when it came time to buy a couch on the other hand, it was interesting because in my mind, I always wanted to be able to actually sit on the couch, you know, see if it was comfortable, you know, actually go through it. Something that I never thought that I would do was actually buy a couch online without having gone to the store to actually test it out. But what was great was the fact that retailers actually did a pretty good job at aggregating the data that people wanted to see. So, you know, if it's comfortable, if it pills really easily, you know? Some of the more details that you probably wouldn't get online before, they now had online and you could dig through reviews and see what people liked, what people didn't like about the couch. Anyways, long story short, we ended up ordering the couch online and you know, here it is. Now, what was interesting about the category is that it grew by 14% through to November last year compared to the year before, causing some crazy delays and backlogs. Now, I think this trend will definitely slow down as things get back to normal, so us not being at home as often. But in the meantime, let's take a look at what other trends might be sticking around. One is definitely digital tools that we use, not just for working, but also for spending, saving, and sending money online, including sending money internationally. Now, people sending money transfers to their families around the world definitely isn't just a trend. It's something that millions of people do regularly to support their families. During the pandemic, the money transfer process went more digital than it's ever been before out of necessity. The World Bank actually predicted in the spring of 2020 that remittances, aka money transfers, to middle and low income countries would slow down by about 20%, which would have been the sharp fall in modern history. But their predictions ended up being wrong because money transfers held steady and actually grew in some countries. Even though the actual physical stores and locations that people would typically go to to send money transfers were closed, digital methods were being adopted pretty quickly instead. Money transfers have been growing a lot in the last decade plus, hitting $574 billion in 2019. And the good news is that digital solutions should continue to make this process easier, faster, and more affordable because it does typically cost less to send money online. Now this is pretty much the same 
same as banking online in general. We obviously talk about digital banking on this channel all the time with either lower or no fee options, but a lot of people still hadn't made the switch before the pandemic hit. One specific study done by BCG actually found that 44% of 18 to 34 year olds used online banking last year for the very first time. And even though some people are still hesitant to going digital, maybe they're afraid of making a mistake by doing it themselves online. The good news is once more people see the convenience and the transparency that online alternatives offer, they're more likely to keep using them going forward. Speaking of convenience and transparency, we're excited to take a second to tell you about one of the leaders in international money transfers, Wise. They're a fintech company with 11 million global customers focused on making it easier, more affordable, and more transparent to spend and send money around the world. On top of being able to send money digitally, they've also just launched the new Wise card in Canada that's attached to the already established Wise account. It provides Canadian consumers and small businesses with an easy and cost-effective way to move money around the world, whether you're holding multiple currencies, spending, sending, or receiving. With this card and account, you're able to complete instant, transparent, and hassle-free payments for international purchases online or while traveling. You can use it to spend abroad in 200 different countries with no hidden fees or exchange rate markups, spend online with Apple or Google Pay, or in person with 150 plus currencies. Overall, the Wise card is focused on offering transparent banking options to Canadians, allowing them to save money when making multi-currency transactions. We've learned that 80% of Canadians didn't know that banks charge hidden fees on international exchange rates. And the Wise card is four times cheaper than the alternatives for international purchases with no foreign fees. They wanna help Canadians to save from spending 13 billion per year on hidden fees on international payments. Wise has an easy to use app and website for use on the go, making it great for both consumers and small businesses. If you wanna check it out, we'll have a link in the description box and in the pinned comment. And as always, we have a Wise card ourselves, so make sure you ask us any questions down there too. And lastly, a big thank you to Wise for working with us on this video. Now the pandemic in general caused some serious brand loyalty disruptions. According to McKinsey, 75% of consumers tried out new shopping habits mainly because of convenience. What's interesting about this though is that a lot of Gen Zs and millennials actually switched from their favorite and most trusted brands to new ones without giving it much thought. Now for those of you that are wondering whether this is a good thing or a bad thing, I honestly don't think it's bad at all. Utilizing new financial tools, especially online ones, can lead to lower expenses and more transparency, especially in the financial industry like we mentioned with online banking and WISE. On top of that, McKinsey also claims that services like e-groceries, virtual healthcare appointments are here to stay and are going to continue growing at much higher levels than they would have if the pandemic hadn't happened. Another change is also those investments in home furniture and home furnishing. So I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but pre-pandemic, so pre-2020, this consumer trend was actually on the decline. Even though we're not expecting this trend to continue growing like it's been for the past two years, meaning it's definitely gonna slow down, the trend has definitely reversed. Another interesting one is that even though they predict that entertainment, air travel, education, categories that really couldn't do that much to adapt during the initial spread and saw big declines in revenue, even though we saw those categories fall, we're definitely expecting a bounce back post these times. So now what about the physical items that people said they wanted and really put their money behind? You know, work from home clothes, for example. If you were buying new clothes, you're probably buying sweaters, sweatpants, generally just like more comfier clothing. Funny enough, it's actually why we saw one of Steph's favorite clothing stores grow so rapidly during this time, which was the exact opposite of home work workout equipment. At the end of the day, the stores that moved to digital quicker than the rest and also captured that loungewear trend, those are the ones that performed really well and are also looking pretty good moving forward. I mean, this is just one example of how capturing a consumer trend, specifically the loungewear trend in this example, helped propel some companies forward if they played their cards right. Bringing it over to us for a second, you might know that Dan and I both work at home together at the same desk that's in our bedroom. So obviously even after working from home for over two years now, we still haven't moved into a bigger space that has its own office, but a lot of people have. At the very beginning of working from home, we saw that a lot of people were leaving downtown in city centers because they didn't have to be as close to the office anymore. They can move further away for either more space to save on costs or both. And people already considering leaving the city decided that now was the push they needed. And a lot of people did end up moving further away from where they currently live. During 2020, so just last year alone, 63% of North American home buyers put at least one offer in on a house that they never saw in person. Obviously made possible by the switch quick to virtual tours and just people being really desperate to move quickly. I had never pictured us doing a virtual tour of a place that we were gonna buy, whether that's to live in or as an investment property, but who knows, maybe now it'll be more and more the norm in this industry. It's clearly shaken up the status quo that has been the static way of buying homes in the past. We've also seen that the suburban 
real estate market specifically is supposed to be just as popular in the next year. Something else that we've seen is that people that are staying in cities like us are looking for different amenities in their apartments than they have in the past. Actual co-working spaces within apartment buildings are becoming more and more popular, having rooftop lounges with different areas to sit and work, or at least having enough room in your apartment to have a work from home desk station as becoming essentially a must have. Obviously you guys would be the first to know when we plan on making a move ourselves, but this is applicable to us because obviously we're gonna want a little more space to continue to film and create our content. So obviously the change in consumer behavior with everything work from home has had a huge impact on a lot of industries. We've seen anything from quick trends to long lasting changes. What we do know though, is that working from home, shopping online, both spending and saving online, those are here to stay for all of us. Anyways, we hope that you enjoyed the video. We'd love to know some of the changes that you've seen and made down in the comment box below. And also a big shout out and thank you to Wise for working with us on this video. If you're interested in checking out the Wise card, we're gonna have their link down below. As usual guys, if you enjoyed this video and you wanna help out the channel, make sure you show us some love down below with a like. Make sure you're subscribed. And if you haven't seen any of our previous videos, make sure you check them out next door, door. We will be back, you know the vibes, let's go.